Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and welcome to part one of our 148 scale Edward Lysander build. So I'm going to be building um, this kit as the Special Operations Executive version uh, which means you'll be seeing the completed model um, in the, at the black livery rather than a, a camouflage livery. So I've already done uh, a first impressions review of what we get in the box and I'll put a link for that at the end of this video. Um, so uh, let's crack on with the build. Okay, so um, in addition to what comes in the box, we have um, some uh, additional photo etch that we need to um, account for. So it's one uh, small sheet, um, basically. Um, which also comes from, from Edward. Um, and we also have um, a replacement exhaust um, from a quick boost. Um, so that all looks very nice. Um, and, and that's it. Other than that, it's pretty much everything came in the box. So um, first job is to get these um, secondary etch instructions into the manual and I've already done that so um, all I've simply done is where there's some additional photo etch that's not accounted for that didn't come in the kit because there's there's quite a bit comes with the kit along with resin parts I've just put a little E in that um, construction step so I know to refer to these instructions as well okay so that's how we're going to tackle that um, I also have um, this book as, as reference material, um, it's a technical guide to the Lysander, um, which when I build this, I'll keep hold of this in case I do a, a 132 version at some point. I don't even know if there is a 132 kit. Or if I decide that I want to do another another Lysander uh, of any scale really, um, because it has some really lovely reference photos in. Um, it, it does it in, in stages. It's got photographs out of the original handbook for the aircraft. Um, so you can see sort of where all the cabling goes. Um, so it's very, very detailed. Um, has colour photographs of actual museum aircraft as well. And it explains to you what everything is. So it's educational as well. And then at the back we flip through this, you can see there's, there's tons and tons of stuff here. Um, it then has um, various different um, colour options for you, so Polish service there, um, D-Day, loads and loads. I quite like that one, I've got to say, I really do quite like that one, um, which is this one here, and um, yeah. Um, lots and lots of uh, different options and they even review some of the um, other kits at the back um, and talk about what needs to be done with them. So, um, yeah, and even have the, the aftermarket stuff in there. So the quick boost stuff is in there. This model kit's mentioned in there. Um, so this is a recent book. Um, came out after this kit came out um, but yeah um, it looks really good and we'll be using this as the reference material for this now I have already gone through this and compared the instructions and I've got to say Edward appeared to have done a very good job of getting this quite accurate so um, enough about the uh, paperwork let's get on with putting some plastic so the build starts, uh, as is pretty much always the case, uh, with um, building up the cockpit interior. Um, although I'm not going to start there, first thing I want to understand is how good the fit is of the two fuselage halves. So that's my first task. Um, I think it always gives you a fairly good indication of what the rest of your um, build's going to be like. So we'll just nip that lot off. So we've got some interior um, 
detail there, which will look um, okay under some uh, under a wash. Quite heavy sprue connectors, actually. I know some people um, like to remove their connectors when the uh, when they've fitted the two parts together. Um, I personally like to remove them as best I can beforehand. Um, I, I guess it's just um, horses for courses. That I don't think it makes much difference either way, probably. In my mind, I'm making sure there's nothing getting in the way of the fit. So there's an injector pin mark here right on the nose cone that's ever so slightly raised or has a little bit of flash around it. I think that's flat. Just run your fingers over the uh, over the surface and if you can feel something that feels like a lump, get rid of it. Okay, that looks all good, so let's have a look at the two halves. So there's no, um, there's no location pins for this, it's, uh, I guess the cockpit when it goes in will act as an anchor and a location point. And that gives us an understanding of the size of what we're doing. So I think we're going to have some filling to do on this back edge here. Um, and we're definitely going to have some there because, um, because of the nubs and some underneath. Detail looks nice. Okay. Right, this feels quite greasy, so we're gonna go and wash all the parts. Okay, so I've given all these um, parts a bit of a wash. So my next job is to build up some of these sub-assemblies. Um, so we've got um, a couple of tanks there to, um, that we can build up. Um, we can build up the cowling um, we need to check if the bombs need if the bombs are two halves we can do those um, we can do the wings and the tail um, that's probably about it now I'm doing um, marking um, the marking of E, um, which is the Special Operations Executive version. So my Los Angeles is going to be all black, um, which means I won't be using the ski, but I'm going to retain the ski because um, I'm probably going to do a second Los Angeles because uh, it's just such a nice, quirky looking aircraft that I'm fairly sure I'm going to do another one. Um, right, oh, and then there's a drop tank we can do as well because that's on the... Um, the SOE version as well. So let's start with these tanks on the first page here, um, parts 15 and 16. So I'd forgotten about this but when we reviewed the um, aircraft in the first instance there's no actual numbers on these sprues so you're having to refer to the front page for your um, numbers. So I think what we're going to do is take the first page out and then we can have that to hand all the way through the build. What I generally do is cut them away from the sprue so there's a bit of a nub on and sand down. Um, just to make sure that I don't do any damage while I'm removing it. Yeah. Just have... Okay. So 
So I'm just trimming that part down a bit. Got a little bit of flash on the mating surfaces, so we're just going to take that down. Okay, so that's fitting flat all the way around. So I'm just going to grab a peg. Which will hold that together nicely while we put some glue on it. So I'm using the extra thin here. And we just going to uh, touch the seam and as soon as you touch the seam the capillary reaction kicks in and um, the glue's gone between your two parts so there's the benefit of this super thin glue is you can hold your parts together and and get your glue in there and you know you've got your alignment done first. The disadvantage sometimes is if you put too much on you can leave a, a witness on the plastic because it does um, melt the surface. But yeah I'm happy with that. Quite a bit of clean up needed on that. So we can see we've got a seam all the way around now where we've joined the parts. Um, so we can get that done and out of the way so I'm gonna go a little bit coarser to start with on these ends I like to sand in different directions just to make sure that we've we've leveled it um, both ways and you can see that the part if you look at this part here you can see where it's still shiny we haven't touched that yet so we know we've not leveled that um, on this side there's no shine anymore um, so we know that we've sanded all of that surface now obviously this is a sponge but it's not very very spongy um, but we will finish it off with the uh, flat emery board now that on these on this wrap round edge um, it's not perfectly flat it, it's got a slight camber on it so we don't want to lose the camber you can see I cut a narrow bit into the ends of my uh, emery boards and this is exactly why um, so I can get into these smaller areas um, and if I get something that's even smaller than that I can cut a little strip off just for that job so that looks okay in the light. What we'll do at some point, we'll put some primer on and um, that'll tell us if we need to do any more work on this part. Um, so I've just got this to do and then we're going to put some definition in. So um, next thing we're going to do is just put some definition in on these... Uh, strap edges so simply going to take the pointy um, end of my knife and scrape along the edge and what we're doing is um, just crispening up the edge there because the molding process means that you have a slight slope um, on the edge of everything so that it'll come out of the tool uh, and what we're doing is getting rid of the bottom of the slope so we've got something that looks a bit more realistic um, and you'd be surprised what a difference that will make to the look of the part once it's under paint okay that is our first part built up which I'm guessing is some form of fuel tank happy with that 
so we can uh, put that in the box ready for building. So I have a second um, auxiliary fuel tank that tended to be used um, um, not in all of the aircraft but in the ones used by special operations executives or where they were going to have to go on uh, an extended flight path. Um, so I'm just cleaning this up in the same way as the other one so um, the fit is, is really nice. There's no location lugs but everything lines up really well. Um, so no issues here. I'm going to clean this up in the same way as the other one so uh, we won't dwell on this one. I'm just wondering, I think we might need the ring just to line things up because there's no location lugs on this. There is some um, raised ejector pin marks that we need to get rid of so let's deal with that next. So to deal with that I've got a roll of um, fairly coarse um, sandpaper um, so we can just quickly take take that out. Um, it's not wrapped around anything, it's just wrapped around itself um, and that's enough to give us what we need. You could wrap it around a, a dowel or um, a rat tail file or something if you wished but um, I find this is stiff enough. So, um, but what we've done by doing that is we've we've scratched the surface quite a bit. So um, I'm now going to get a roll of much finer wet and dry. And we'll do exactly the same same thing. There we go. So that's taken out a lot of the scratches. And then I'm using this sponge. This is a very fine, fine grit. You can almost not feel the grit. Um, and because it's a sponge, it will conform to the shape. Um, and we'll just finish that off and make sure it's sort of nice and smooth. Um, so let me go and clean up the others because there's one on each one and then I'll come back to you. So I've mounted it on my little vise. It's quite a handy little tool this because um, these little movable pegs mean you can get it to fit to anything and at the moment uh, I'm using the pegs on the inside to hold this open um, rather than holding it closed as you'd normally do with a vise. See that on the camera a little jet pin mark one on each side and it's on the locating rim of the part so what's happening is um, it's making the parts not sit flat so we just need to uh, remove that um, and then hopefully when everything sits flat we should be able to make these parts okay yeah. I think we have sorted that now um, but in the process we've mixed up our parts so I'm going to have to make sure that we're putting the right parts together here because um, the back end of this um, has a different shape because there's a little cutout for the exhaust. So much more fiddly than it should be. Okay. Okay, that's the first two bits together. I think a bit of perseverance, we are nearly there. Okay, so we have got these together now. Um, 
but I think we're going to have to glue them onto this ring. So, because it's popping up and it's just not happy. So, let's glue that in. Right then, we've finally got the engine cowl together. Um, it was a little, a little fiddly. Um, and it's lined up okay. Um, a little bit of clean up still to do on this. And we've got two parts, two little hoops on the inside there that we need to remove um, according to the instructions. So I'm just going to snip them off. And then using the same process as we did before with the round sandpaper, we'll remove those and sand those down. So I'll show you what that looks like when that's done. Um, the next thing is this a little additional fuel tank. So um, we've been fitted. Um, and if we look at the pictures here, it shows you that tank fitted. Um, what it also shows you is that the Edward part is close, but not quite right. So there's the end of the tank there. And you can see the little pipe coming out there. That's the end of our tank. So the shape's right, but it's flat there. Where it, so we need to replicate this sort of gradual curve into that. So we're going to sand that down a bit and try and shape it. And we might have to build up the centre of that. Um, also, the little outlet pipe there um, which I'm guessing that is then the plumbing into the main fuel tank which is actually directly below it um, is elliptical in shape rather than circular so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that which will make shaping that easier and then just put a, um, a section of brass rod we'll drill, drill a hole in it put a section of brass rod in it um, so that'll make that circular it also looks slightly undersized to me so um, we're putting a slightly larger diameter in so we can correct the size of that as well at the same time so that's a task to be done um, whilst before I do that I'll show you what else we've got on the go so um, the drop tank um, I've glued together and there's no um, location pins on anything on this kit but um, the parts lining uh, are lining up really beautifully so yeah we've got some cleanup to do on that but it's not bad and I've got the first wing um, held together so we're going to glue that now um, and what I'm finding is the um, the fit of the parts is really good so there's no issues with lining these two halves up um, and, and getting them to mate properly. There's no massive seam clean up, there's a little bit, um, but you, they're not, you know, a million miles apart, so um, it's quite easy. Um, and all I've done, as you can see, is clamp it together with clothes pegs, which has allowed me to uh, hold it in the right position. And then we're just letting the glue um, make its own journey into the seam. And that should um, that should hold itself quite well. And then when we take the pegs off, if there's anything that's not quite gone together, we can revisit that. So that's the first wing done as well. So the sub-assemblies are coming together a little bit. So let's um, let's have a look at this. So I've already cleaned up the rest of the tank and we've gone round um, as we did with the first fuel tank um, and scribed um, the edges around this belting here. It's, it's sort of a strap that holds it into place, I, I guess. It's all the way around. So, um, so we're just going to nip this off um, and 
and that allows us to get in and shape this a bit better now. So first thing we're going to do is just get rid of the bulge underneath um, where this was. And then we're going to go into the curve and try and soften that curve a little bit. Um, and that should uh, that should slowly improve the look of that. So let me do that and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so we're just starting to form that, soften the curve if you like, so make that curve more gradual. Uh, also the point is um, a bit too sharp, so we want to just take that down a bit as well. So we'll start it off with the emery board and then finish it with the sanding sponges because Sanding sponges are very good at rounding stuff off. Okay, so I think I've got that where we need it. So let's have a little compare. So there's the end of the extra fuel tank. And there's my part softened off. Um, I don't think we need to build that up. I think that looks about right. Um, so I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Um, so the next thing we need to do is get this brass rod in. So let me find a drill bit of the right diameter and we'll deal with that. Okay, so I'm just going to, I can use the seam as a centre line guide. So even though we've sanded it away, it's visible. Um, and then I'm just going to use this uh, little punt as a centre mark here, uh, which will just help me see the drill bit and then we will slowly carefully making sure we've got the angle about right so the angle is slightly steeper than the original kit part had it there we go, we are in Off. Uh, and now we can test fit our bit of wire. So a bit of wire fits in there just nicely. So we'll cut a little length of that and then we'll glue that. There's lots of different ways you can go about um, cutting brass rod. But, um, you know, um, wire snips and stuff like that work quite well. Um, but I think as rod gets thicker, there's nothing quite as uh, good as a proper rod cutting tool. There we go. So we should be able to push this in now, we'll use the flat end, although we will sand it a little bit. Um, you can see the, the rod cutter cuts it without squeezing the, uh, the rod, so you've not got a, um, a pinch to sand off. And place that in there. And now we just need to make sure we have the right looking length sticking out at the bottom. That looks about right. Um, and we'll get some super thin glue. So I'm going to use uh, Rocket Super Thin. Because this works in the same way as um, extra thin plastic glue. Because I can just run it into the gap there. And 
and you wouldn't even know that I put glue on it, it's that thin. There we go, that's done. So, hopefully, you will agree that we have taken this part from being something that looked perfectly adequate to something that looks spot on. I'm happy with that. We've increased the diameter um, so that it looks more like that. We've rounded off and softened the edges so it looks more like that. Um, I think under paint that will look just fine. Um, we need to think about this bit. Now, the other point that we have to consider, the other alteration for the SOE, is that the Edward kit comes with a seat in this area here, which was standard fitting um, for the Lysander. But when this extra tank goes in, the seat is removed because of this plumbing, because um, the seat would be about where the plumbing is. Um, and this here is actually wood slats. And if you look carefully, you can see the hinges. So this hinges up, and then there's hinges behind here, and that folds down underneath so that it clears underneath that. Um, so I believe that was to sit on instead of the seat when this extra tank was in place. So we won't be using the nice photo etch replacement seat um, and I'm going to have to use some plastic card to fabricate um, a replacement um, set of boards to go in there. Um, so when I'm thinking about the kit, we're not using the resin bombs, we're not using the resin skis, we're not using some of the photo etch the photo etch seat and some other bits and pieces because they're not applicable to the SOE um, version. So all in all there's quite a bit of leftovers in this kit so I've taken the view because I really do like the look of the skis I've taken the view that um, it makes sense to buy another one so what I've done is I've bought um, you can't get the the kit anymore um, it's discontinued but what I have done is bought the overtrees so if you've not bought over trees from Edward before, um, you get just the plastic components. You don't get decals, you don't get instructions, um, you just get the, the plastic sprues. Well, that's fine because I've got so many options in this kit um, and so many leftovers that I'm going to be able to build the finished version using the same instructions, using the decals that came with this uh, and all the extra parts. So I'm basically going to get two kits out of this. And the, the plastic sprues cost me eight quid plus a little bit of shipping. Um, so uh, that's a bargain for me. Um, so we will, when that turns up, we will get that quickly built up as well. And we'll perhaps finish the two kits together, the finished furniture and the SOE. Um, so it should look pretty good. So that's our second completed part in the pot. Right, let's clean up the drop tank. Um, so now this is glued together, we can carefully remove the nubs, making sure we don't damage the surface area that we want to maintain. Um, and we can sand those down. So the same process as we used for the two uh, two fuel tanks. It just means while I've got my sanding sticks out and stuff, we're, we're tackling all the same jobs at the same time. And it also means when uh, when the time comes to get the filler out, we can use that on anything that we've identified needs filler right from the start. Okay, well, you don't want me to watch me sanding, so um, I will come back to you when this is done. Here we have it, the uh, drop tank is done, um, no filling required, parts lined up lovely, um, no gaps whatsoever, um, so yeah really really nice. Uh, part fit so far has been excellent. So that's my third part, 
Done. Okay, so um, I've completed building up the sub assemblies. Um, the, the both the wheels and the uh, tail um, sections here went together in exactly the same way as the the wing that we did. Um, so there's no location lugs for these, same as with anything else. It's just a matter of careful alignment. But the fit of the parts is is extremely good. Um, the the wings need sanding, but they're not going to need filling. Um, the wheels aren't going to need filling, the tail's not going to need filling. Um, the Probably the, the most tricky fit was the um, cowling here um, and I've got some more careful sanding to do on this to get this looking right. Um, so that's the trickiest bit and, w and I need to take out the inside of that. Um, and we've done our fuel tanks and our drop tank and we've test fitted the fuselage so we know that fits all together so I think we're going to call that a day for this video um, off camera before the next video I'm going to clean up all of these parts um, and put some effort into sorting that out um, and then in the next video part two we will start the build proper um, with this seat here um, and already looking at this um, my thought process is that we won't put these uh, belts on until a bit later on when we we're probably ready to fit it into the onto the floor pan. I would guess, and oh, we've got the painting done. Um, so I need to have a little think about that. We've got some additional etch to go onto that part. Um, so yeah, we will start step A next time. Thank you for your watching. Stay safe, everyone, uh, and I hope to see you all soon. So just a last little update, um, so yeah, I went and bought the set of overtrees for this, which um, if you've not bought um, Edward overtrees before, it, you basically you get a plain unmarked box with just a little label on and inside you get the plastic sprues um, and nothing else, you get no instructions, you get no decals, you get nothing else, but we've got so much in this original kit that we don't need it because um, you've got the instructions the the extra decals um, in there so the only thing you need to add if you wish is photo etch um, and we'll be um, adding just um, a dashboard uh, in the finished version um, but some of the photo etch that I've got we won't be using in the SOE version so that will also get used in the finished version so uh, we're going to get two ring two kits out of this okay see you next time